What's good everybody? It's your boy Bulldog aka Jesse and in today's video this is going to be the ultimate settings guide. We're going to take an in-depth look into the settings and some of the more important stuff that has changed in this year's title compared to last year and pretty much every other Call of Duty on console. If this video helps you out don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff and don't forget to ring the little sub notification bell that way you can be notified when new videos go up here on the channel every Wednesday. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took away the camera. This way you can see the full screen. Now these settings are mainly going to be for multiplayer. So your first option right here is your input device, controller or mouse, whatever you're using. For me, my horizontal is on 5 sensitivity and my vertical is on 4. I know that's a little bit lower than what most people run, but I got a heavy thumb and I tend to... Uh, over aim my target a lot so this definitely helps me out also with the ADS sensitivity for low zoom the low zoom is for uh, four times zoom and lower so your red dot sites and uh, like the VLK site from Modern Warfare stuff like that I again have this set pretty low to 0.65 and the way you get the the 0.65 is if you hit X while it's highlighted, it brings up a number and you can literally put whatever number you want in here and you can keep adding digits up to seven total digits. But I just keep it at 0.65. Then for the high zoom, I have that set at 0.85. That's for like the sniper rifles and everything that zooms in over four times. My button layout is set to tactical and this is just the way I've been playing since... Uh, COD 4 way back in the day so for me the melee button is going to be B and when I click in on the right stick I crouch or go prone or uh, if I'm running I slide now this flip right here is going to swap um, your aim down sight and your fire from the triggers to the bumpers uh, I really don't need that um, so I leave that alone the invert vertical look like hell no so that that pretty much does like in some of those airplane simulators where when you uh, look down or when you pull down on the stick you actually look up and that kind of stuff forget that controller vibration I turn that off I don't need that uh, there's your aim assist we want that on strafing aim assist we'll keep that on uh, this mantle behavior I have this as manual so if I'm jumping next to something, I don't auto mantle, which is good. I don't want to accidentally mantle when I don't want to. Uh, and the grounded mantle, you could either press it or you can uh, have to press it twice to mantle over something. But I just press it once. Uh, aim down sight behavior, we leave that alone. Steady aim behavior, we leave that alone. Now this armor behavior, I have this set up like I do in uh, Warzone. So when I hit the armor button, it applies all the armor at once instead of applying one at a time. And that's just what I prefer to do. Uh, the attack vehicles, we'll just leave it as aim-based. And this advanced stick layout, I really don't mess with this. Uh, the only thing I'm changing right here is this uh, threshold for the input, left and right. So my left, the minimum is 10. Now if you start to have like stick drift or something like that in controllers, you could bump this up. And it'll minimize that uh, stick drift. So 10 and 99 for the left and the right. Uh, auto move forward, I disabled that. Auto sprint, I disabled. Sprint behavior, toggle. So you just uh, you just tap to, to move forward and then you release when you want to stop. Sprint cancel reloads. I never want my sprint to cancel my reload, even though it does it in every game. I don't know why they have this option. Uh, auto parachute I'm going to disable that because I don't know exactly when it hits the auto parachute and it might do it if I don't want it to so we're going to leave that alone for now the equipment behavior that's up to you I have mine on hold and for the interact and reload behavior I prioritize reloading over everything so no matter, no matter what I'm doing if I tap the X button to reload it's going to reload if I hold the X button next to something then it'll pick something up all right so one of the big things we're going to go over right here is this colorblind mode and 
The one that I'm that I usually uh, run with is the Tritinopia. I think that's how you say it. So the first thing you could change is yourself, your color. So I make myself green because green's my favorite color. So we'll leave we'll leave that where it is. Then for my allies, I have them yellow, so it's really bright and easy to distinguish who's on my team and who's not. For the enemies, I have them this like super bright, kind of neon, hot pink, whatever it's called. And that way I can see them super easy uh, throughout the map. Now for people in my party, I have them as this kind of like lightish kind of blue color. And so that'll help me determine who's in my party, who's not, and uh, who's the bad guys. So that's the settings I use for that, and it seems to work out pretty well. The next big one is this field of view. So if you look at the little description there, the field of view that we get on console usually is the 80. And in that square is all you can see when you're playing the game. This is the first time that we've had a field of view slider for consoles. So this is a big deal. And what I usually use is at 120 in the beta and now in the full release of the game. And that just gives me the widest field of view. It makes you feel like you're moving faster, even though you're really not. <laughs> and uh, it just lets you see a whole lot more. Now, the next thing here is this effective uh, field of view for when you're aiming down sights. And this has the same effect. If you put it on independent, then when you're aiming down sights, you have a smaller area of what you could see going on around you, like the picture show. So I have that as affected, so it shows up the same way. Uh, rate tracing I have enabled. The split screen, I'm not worried about it. The motion blur, I disable the motion blur because I don't want anything distracting me or making it harder to see my targets. So motion blur is off. Audio over here, um, I have the master volume at 100, music's off, sound effects, dialogue, and cinematics are all at 100. The audio preset, the one that I found out works the best, is this high boost. And this is going to help you hear footsteps and stuff like that. Um, your hit markers, you can put them on or off. It's up to you. And the speaker and headphone game sounds, just leave that alone. Voice chat, I have that disabled for right now. That way uh, I don't have to hear other people talk because they annoy the crap out of me. Uh, party chat, I have it on for voice and text chat channel. And then all that other stuff is blocked out for me, so I'm not worried about it. The interface subtitles are off, crosshairs are on, hit markers are visual, and all this stuff I'm leaving on, except for the enemy health bar. I don't I don't need to see that because I usually play hardcore, and the he allied health bar we'll get rid of that too. No big deal. Uh, player name we leave that on full. Floating damage we're gonna turn that off again because we're just playing a. Uh, we're just playing a hardcore, so we don't need to see that. And for the zombie stuff, we'll leave that on so it shows everything. Uh, keyboard and mouse, I don't use it, so I really can't help anybody out with that part. And then the account and network, we got crossplay enabled, we got the cloud save enabled, and then just the regular, the rest of the stuff telling us our NAT type and all that. And that's gonna do it for the settings. Alright folks, so there you have it. That was the settings guide for this year's game, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting more in-depth in the gameplay and stuff like that. Um, it's still early on right now. I think I've had maybe two hours of sleep since uh, playing the campaign last night and um, setting up this video today before I start streaming. Um, yeah, it's going to be a long weekend. But... As you can see right here, boom. I got to rip it right there. See? Rip it. So yeah, I'm ready for it. By the way, rip it. Sponsor your boy. <laughs> if you want to see what I'm up to when I'm not streaming or making videos, you can follow me on Twitter, at Bulldog87G. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok, at Bulldog87 underscore gaming. If you want to catch one of my streams, I'll be streaming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on twitch.tv slash Bulldog87 underscore gaming. And by the time you watch this, if it's the weekend of the launch for Black Ops Cold War, then more than likely I'm streaming right now. So hop on over there and check it out. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time, or I'll catch you on the battlefield. Stay smart and stay safe. Peace out.